Hey, what's going on, everybody? So I want to go over my official and only mock draft coming into this 2022 NFL draft tomorrow, and we'll see. We'll see tomorrow just how accurate I am. Hopefully, I at least get, you know, one pick right. If, if I think if we get one right, I'll call it a success. Um, so I sort of want to go want to go through each of my picks, sort of why I gave put them on certain teams, and we'll see. We'll see how this goes. If you guys are new here, you haven't subscribed, feel free to subscribe to the channel down below. I put out Packers content mainly, but other NFL content as well. So starting off here, um, I'm going to go pretty quickly through this. This isn't going to be a super long video. I just want to give my quick thoughts on this, and you guys can see my overall board um, here. And we'll see tomorrow what I actually get right and how many I get wrong. We'll tally it up tomorrow, or I'll see. Um, so first off here, we have I have the Jaguars going tackle, deciding to shore up tackle, protecting Trevor Lawrence, going Ikemi Kwanu from North Carolina State. I have then Aiden Hutchinson um, going to the Detroit Lions. The Lions decide to come in there and get a guy who's pretty familiar with that area of the country, and uh, he goes there to the Lions. I got Trayvon Walker going to the Texans at number three. Ahmad Sauce Gardner going number four to the New York Jets. We got Evan Neal going to the Giants. Charles Cross going to the Panthers. And then I got Kayvon Thibodeau um, going to the Giants. So the Giants start off with, you know, two solid players on the O-line and the defensive line. Then here we have, I'd say, the, the one that maybe could potentially happen. We will see. I have Malik Willis going to the Falcons. I know that the Falcons, I feel like the Falcons haven't really been too much in the QB conversation when it comes to people mocking them in certain teams, but I don't see why they wouldn't be interested um, after, you know, trading away Matt Ryan in this this past offseason. I know the Panthers are a big team that people think could take QB at number six. Potentially, can he pick it? Who knows what they're thinking there? But I just sort of can see Malik Willis just being drafted by the Falcons because with them, um, didn't they get Marcus Mariota? Isn't that who they got? Um, but I feel like why not take a shot on a guy who potentially could be great in the NFL? You never know what could happen. So I think the Falcons come in here and draft Malik Willis. Then we have Derek Stingley falling to the um, Seattle Seahawks there at nine. And then the first wide receiver off the board, I have the Jets deciding to go with Jamison Williams, giving Zach Wilson some more uh, some more wide receiver depth there in New York. I have Garrett Wilson going to the Washington Commanders with Carson Wentz. We have Trent McDuffie going to the Vikings. The Texans decide to tr take Drake London. I just sort of feel like that makes sense. Just sort of a gut feeling. I feel like he'll end up there in, in uh, Houston. I have Jordan Davis going to the Ravens, Kyle Hamilton falling to the Eagles with them being like, wow, Kyle Hamilton fell to us. Yeah, why not? We'll just we'll just pick him up. Then I have here the Saints going Kenny Pickett. And I know, of course, the Saints have uh, Jameis Winston this year, but I, I don't know if he's really their plan for the future. And I think lots of people, you know, haven't really expected the, the Saints to come in and draft a QB. And lots of people think, you know, th think Kenny Pickett could fall to the Steelers at 20. But I think the Saints switch it up here and decide to draft Kenny Pickett. Then I have Chris Olave going to the Chargers, helping Justin Herbert out there. We have Devin Lloyd going to the Eagles. Bernard Raymond going to the Saints, um, protecting their new quarterback there in Kenny Pickett. And then we have, with this, the Steelers are sitting here at 20 like, man, Saints, why'd you pick Kenny Pickett? And so they still decide they want a QB. Um, and with that being the case, they decide to go with Matt Corral. They are from Mississippi. Then we got Nicobe Dean going to the Patriots. And then here, for the Packers, um, as this is a Packers channel, I want to focus on these the Packers' two picks. So I have Traylon Burks going to Green Bay. And I just think that it is a great fit. I really, obviously, the Packers need a wide receiver. And I think Traylon Burks is going to be a monster in the NFL. And I think um, coming to Green Bay, obviously, there's lots of opportunity right now. And uh, I think he can be a great fit for the Packers. So with him still being around a 22, I slate him to the Green Bay Packers. And we have Tyler Linderbaum, center going to the Cardinals. The Cowboys decided to come in and add some wider, a wide receiver in Sky Moore after losing both Amari Cooper and Cedric Wilson this offseason. Then I have the Bills coming in here, and I feel like this, this could be a surprise come in and, and pick George Pickens to really make this offense that much scarier because if he, I think George Pickens does have the potential to be an insanely elite wide receiver. And if the Bills get him here, I mean, that would be scary for uh, lots of other teams if he ends up being an elite player, clearly. Then we have George Karloftis going to the Titans, Zion Johnson going to the Buccaneers. And then here for the Packers at 28, Daxton Hill, who you know many people see as a safety in the NFL, even though PFF has him here slated as cornerback. And I think this pick could make sense for the Packers just because safety is one of the Packers' needs with both Adrian Amos and um, Darnell Savage, their contracts ending after this year. Darnell Savage, of course, could have his fifth-year option um, you know, exercise in the next couple weeks potentially. 
But I think with that need at safety in the next couple of years, getting a guy in Daxon Hill who can play safety, but also played slot corner in college, he also gives the Packers that depth at cornerback. Because right now, I think obviously having Jair Alexander, Eric Stokes, and Rasul Douglas, we are set at cornerback. But we've seen so many injuries happen. So to be able to have some more depth there at cornerback after losing Kevin King, um, or at least he hasn't been signed by anyone yet, I think... Basically here, we're almost filling two needs in a way because let's say in the first year, Packers still have Amos and Darnell Savage, but a cornerback goes down, they can throw Daxon Hill in there at slot corner potentially, but then also too for the future, you have a guy who can come in and play safety. So in a way, you're filling two holes, you're filling two positions there with Daxon Hill and sort of his versatility. So if he's around at 28 and the Packers go wide receiver the first pick, I could see Daxon Hill going 28 to the Packers. Then we have Andrew Booth Jr., cornerback going to the Chiefs. Christian Watson, even though I want the Packers to draft him, fallen here to the Chiefs as well. I hope Christian Watson lasts until the Packers pick again in the second round, but who knows if that's going to happen. Then I have the Bengals going Kair Elam here at 31. And then the Lions decide to finish it off, picking Desmond Ritter to come into that team there in Detroit. So that is my entire mock draft. Please roast me in the comments why this is going to be wrong because probably most of it will. But thank you guys so much for watching as always. If you guys haven't followed me on Twitter, Luke underscore Beller for more content not here on YouTube. But that is all for today and I'll see you guys next time.